Hello, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Two years and eight months ago, I put my first video out here on this here channel. That learning curve was steep, steep, steep. Now some of these earlier videos that I put out, they've got some pretty good information in them, but I managed to get a hold of some copyrighted music and in order to be monetized, I had to, I had to blank it out. So I've got some videos that are out there that you would be watching along and then they just go quiet. And I did describe this in the description of the video, but a lot of people don't read those. So for the longest time now, I've been wanting to take these videos and remaster them. I didn't have a set way that I delivered my videos. And I was just, I was just learning. I was just, I was just a kid. But all of my presentations have a kind of a set outline, a type of set pacing to them. Some of these videos, I want to fix them. I, I, I've pulled them down, the original ones. They've been, you haven't been able to find them for over a year, year and a half on some of these. I made them pr private videos, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be embarrassed of them. <laughs> so I'm going to take these, I'm going to switch them around a little bit. This first video that I'm going to do came out on March 27th of 2022. It's showcasing the Tyco Pacific that's in the Chessie Systems color. One of the nicest liveries I think I've ever seen. This is a, a really large Tyco set. So we're gonna showcase the set. We're gonna show you how to fix the Pacific locomotive, get it running, all the things that I went through to get it to go, and then show it running around the track just a little bit. The first thing you'll notice that when I get the video going is that I'm obviously suffering from celebrating No Shave November for way, way too long. I got a lot of Norwegian and Swedish in my, in my genealogy, and I, I can't grow beards very well. But every year, every so often, I like to see if it's coming in any better this year than it did two years ago. And that was an experiment that I was trying. Maybe when I turn 60, I'll be able to grow one. I don't, I don't know, but let's get on it. Hello, welcome back to my channel, Classic Model Trains. I'm Ron. I'm super excited with this episode. This is gonna be my over 100 subscribers special. I've been super blessed with the responses received by my videos. I procrastinated for about eight years now trying to put together a YouTube channel. And as of December of 2021, I finally sat down and put up my first video. I wanna thank each and every one of you guys so much for all of your support. We're gonna give this Tyco Chessy System steam locomotive a little cleaning and lubricating before we put it together up in the set. Two screws here at the back of the cab. Just connect this tender wire. And it looks like my drawbar has gotten broken. I've had a lot of success gluing that together with some CA glue. And then the bolt up here in the smokestack. And that'll take the boiler right off. And of course, I want to service up the running gear on it. So I'm also going to remove the motor, which is the first bolt right behind the gear. Simply take this one out right here and then I've got the motor out also so I can work on that. Clean up some of these wheels. Try to get this thing running as smooth as we can. Another reason why I like to take the motor out is so I can spin these spin these drivers while I'm cleaning up the wheels. Makes it a heck of a lot easier. The tender wheels make up the other half of the circuit supplying power to the motor. So of course these wheels have got to be clean also. Another thing that's important is to take the trucks off because the current flows through the truck into the metal frame here. And I like to clean these up with a wire brush just to get any oxidation that could potentially be on there. Loosen up these four remaining screws here and you can get this plate off the bottom which has got the axles down inside of it. I did just service this not too long ago. It looks like I've got kind of a Kind of an excessive amount of oil down in here. You notice how this one doesn't have any brass bushings right in here. So this is the later produced Tyco Pacifics where they gave up uh, putting the, the brass bushings in when they went offshore with their production. Which of course allows, you know, as the thing wears or becomes more slop, gets more slop in it. I want to clean these brushes and this armature out right here. Little tiny springs. Just pop that spring open and the brush will come out. Now oh, these lights, they're always, the little wires always break off. I like to use a little odorless mineral spirits to clean any of the carbon off of these commutators right here. So I am able to get my Bright Boy in there 
and try to polish them up a little bit. Then I like to use a toothpick, clean out these little grooves in between. Clean off any residue that could be on the brushes. Put them back into the groove and put the spring back on. Do the same over here on the other side. Here's where I like to give them a little test roll on my 2% downgrade, just to see how, how they're doing. Make sure that the, the uh, valve gears and, and everything isn't binding up. So that makes me pretty happy right there. I've been waiting to showcase this Tyco set from 1975, 1976 called Mammoth of the Rails. Set 7338. It's headed up by Tyco's Chessy Systems Seam Special Pacific Locomotive. There is an interesting story behind this particular locomotive. There's been many sets with locomotives that have been produced over the years that have been made from a fantasy line type of locomotive, something that had never really existed in either paint job or road name. There's been a lot of locomotives that have been made that are actually made off of real prototypical locomotives. Many, many mass-produced commercial locomotives. There's a lot of models out there for them. But this particular locomotive, there's only one that was ever made, and it only lasted for two years. In 1972, the Baltimore and Ohio, Chesapeake and Ohio, and the Western Maryland Railroads merged and would soon become nicknamed Chessie System. The locomotive number 2101 is a T1 class 484 Northern, originally built and owned by the Reading Railroad. It was in service from 1945 to 1955. It avoided being scrapped and was in a standby pool for the Reading Railroad steam excursion program. It reportedly never saw service in those trips. Reading 2101 was pulled from its would-be final resting place, got refurbished and repainted, and joined two other steam locomotives for use in the American Freedom Train excursions for America's bicentennial celebration taking place during the 1975 and 1976 years. In the spring of 1977, locomotive number 2101 received the Chessie System paint motif and was used as the one and only point on B&O's 150 years celebration as the Chessie Steam Special. The train consisted of the locomotive, two tenders, and 18 to 20 passenger and baggage cars. Sadly, a fire severely damaged number 2101 while being stored in a Chessie Systems roundhouse in March of 1979. It was determined that another complete restoration would be too cost prohibitive, so in 1980, number 2101 was cosmetically restored back into its American Freedom Train paint and put on static display at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore. Another sad note, it's been outside in the elements for over 40 years now and is looking very weathered. Ahead of B&O's prototype arrival in 1977, many hobby companies found it profitable to offer this paint scheme on their already existing steam locomotives. The first hobby company on the scene with the Chessie steam colors appears to be Tyco with their 1975-76 Mammoth of the Rails set number 7338. This was the only set Tyco offered up their Pacific 462 in Chessie colors, but the loco could be bought separately from 1975 through 1978 calendar years. In 1979, Bachman offered a closer to prototypical 484 Chessie system steamer, but it was in the Southern Pacific GS4 class prototype instead of Reading's T1 class. AHM introduced a USRA Light Pacific 462. This Mahano made 462 first appeared in Lifelike's line in early to mid 1970s. AHM also sold a Mikado 282 decorated in Chessie steam beginning around 1981. This release later found a home in IHC Hobbies line. The only mass-produced HO scale correct reproduction of the Chessie System Steam Special Reading T1 locomotive is offered by Broadway Limited Imports, currently as a Paragon 2 release. Tyco used the set name The Mammoth of the Rails three times during the Brown Box era. It can be found in the 1977-78 set number 7337, headed up with a Chattanooga consolidation locomotive. And also in the 1979 to 81 
set number 7336 also headed up with the Chattanooga Consolidation locomotive. And also in the 1975 to 1976 Chessie System steam locomotive set. This is one of the largest sets I believe the Tyco had offered. It's got up to nine cars in the lash up, plus it also has five action accessories in it, plus a great double oval layout. I didn't get this as a complete set. I found the locomotive in a Goodwill auction lot. Uh, it showed up, it was really beat up and didn't run at all. And then the rest of the accessories, I just purchased them kind of piece by piece to build up the complete set. Uh, I'm going to throw them up on the turntable right now, let you guys get a good close look at all the cars, the locomotive. install this motor one of the trucks picks up or one side of the brush is pick up from right over here so this brass bar it's critical to have it clean because it picks up off the chassis under here I'm trying to get all the little hesitations out of this thing my broken bar was tore up in here but I glued it with some CA glue so I am hoping that that's going to hold this together. This is a non-conductive drawbar right here because if the local body and the tender body were to touch each other or be connected electrically, they would short, it would short out on the track. Another key area to clean is this little eyelet to make sure that it can conduct electricity very well through it. No corrosion on it. Doesn't like to creep. Once I get it going, but if I drop it down below five volts, it just doesn't want to keep moving. If I keep it just a little bit above five volts, works just fine. I found this paint here called Harvest Orange at the Walmart, made by Apple Barrel, 2589E. And it's, it's really quite close to the orange that's on here. Tried, you know, for water-based acrylic paint, just trying to cover up all this road rash. Here's some Apple Barrel 2760E King's Gold. And I'm hoping that maybe that color will be the color of the yellow that's on here. Just to touch up this running board that's nicked up. That looks pretty dang close right there. And I know it ain't perfect, but at least it's going to hide these gigantic nicks. My incandescent headlight no longer operates and it broke off from the stud right here and I decided well I might as well go ahead and update it to LEDs. So I found these at the local hobby shop made by Evan Designs. Here it says that they're good for 7 to 19 volts and they've got a bridge rectifier and everything built right into them. When you reverse the polarity they still turn on and work. Used a warm white color to repli replicate a incandescent light bulb. I just tested it out by using it on the track, seeing how it works, and it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder it in on the locomotive. I'll put it up here where these brushes get their power from. Put a little flux on. Of course, the wires are nice and teeny tiny. Tin the top of this brush holder right here. I think I might have made my wires a little on the long side. This is just going to rest right there. This will sit up in the hole. So let's put it on the layout and see if it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Forward, light comes on. Put it in reverse, light comes on. It took a lot to get the locomotive to run. So let's take a look and see what this thing looks like running around the layout. And we'll play with some of the action accessories that came.
little better with a little bit of music in it. Back in the old days, I used to run the locomotives a long time and put music in them. So I didn't really want to ruin that effect. You know, I mean, this is what I did. I didn't want to change it completely. I noticed in the analytics that when the you got a three minute long run around with music, people tend to go away. But not the 33 percenters, they hang out the whole time, huh? <laughs> it's good to see you guys down here. We are at the end of the video. They were a lot shorter back in the day. I just, you know, I didn't want to completely change it. I wanted to keep the essence of it, but just get some music and rearrange it. For some reason, the original video had the runaround part in the middle, and then it had the repair at the complete end. <laughs> I know. So I, yeah, it took me a while to figure out the outline that I was going to use. Thanks so much for hanging out. This here is remastered series. One of about seven or eight that I kind of want to do. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.